Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A. My name is Eric Griffin, president of iTeam Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. For those of you who don't know or are tuning in for the first time, submit your questions to us via email at questions at itmtrading.com. That's questions at itmtrading.com. We take them, put them on, uh, on the screen here, ask them live, so you get a real, true, live, organic response. Now, before we dig in, though, yes. like, I want to reiterate, we've brought this up in the past, but we caught another two fake Twitter profiles this, um, this morning. Uh, thanks to a couple of our clients, they, they pointed it out, and so we've, we've reported them. This one that we have on screen right now is the official Lynette Zhang Twitter profile. So it's at ITM Trading underscore Zhang. Uh, the two fake ones recently were at Lynette underscore Zhang and at Lynette underscore Zhang Z with an S. Um, they had very few followers, and but the, how it works is they make you think they copied the avatar, they copied the banner, copy all the things, and then they um, basically post, repost all of our stuff, and then hopes that you're going to DM them to ask Lynette a question, Lynette a question. You think you're talking to Lynette, but you're talking to a scammer who then asks you to send them money, and uh, you never get that money or anything back. So please... If you see any fake profiles, do not DM them, do not follow them. If you want to follow Lynette, it's at itemtrading underscore Zhang. And uh, if you do find anybody that's trying to scam people, let us know because we, we do our work to get them pulled down. So, Well, Eric, isn't there some way that they can um, submit the, the scammers? Yeah, can you pull, pull, up the, can, pull up that Twitter thing again? Right. Because we will never, ever, ever ask you to send money over oh, social media. Ever. Yeah, and it's you can't do it on there because we're logged in. But typically, to the left of the profile, right around there, that area, there'll be three dots, and you can report them as impersonating somebody else. You and we would right really appreciate that on the scammers if you would do that to help get them taken down. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they somebody else or they won't pop up in another way, but at least we'll get those taken down. No, they down. will. They are, they're yeah. relentless because obviously they... They get they're successful, and anytime they get somebody to send them money, that's it's it's yeah. more motivation for them to keep doing it. So yeah, and, we just wanted you guys to be aware and hopefully help us fight that fight because there's nothing that irks me more than scammers out there trying to take advantage of people. Just yeah, absolutely. That. I would not want their karma. I'll say that. Okay, so okay into the questions. <clears throat> Mystery buyer asks. Now, I know Mystery Buyer, he's been on, like, watching our channel since the beginning because I've seen him comment on our channel before, so. Thank you, Mystery Buyer. I don't, I don't know if we've asked, asked any of his questions before, but here we go. We are today. If I own gold now mm -hmm. and it's revalued to, say, on the low end, $10,000 an ounce. Okay. A, how do they do that? Mm-hmm. How does it fit? How does, how does silver fit in during the gold revaluation? And do they revalue silver as well, or does it just rise in value on its own? Okay. So when they do an overnight revaluation and you see gold go to 10000 an ounce, what actually happens is up to that point, it's been absolutely artificially suppressed. But what they'll do with the currency is they will lop off zeros and reset the currency. And then gold, actually as gold rises, once they do the reset, okay, let me back up. Let me just kind of see this in my mind for a second. Okay. What actually happens is that they start not suppressing the price of gold. In the black market, it's usually running anyway, much higher than the official rates. Kind of, even though it's not a black market, but kind of there's going to be a differential between spot at certain times when it's more stressed, there'll be a differential between spot and then how much we have to pay for the physical, which is a true supply demand department. So what actually happens is they will stop suppressing the price of gold. When they do the overnight revaluation, then they lop off zeros and everything reflects those new, that new um, lopping off, but not until the gold price is really kind of released. And I think I'm saying this in a convoluted way. Let me do this, okay? Just because this is a really good question. 
Let me do a whole piece on that. And Edgar, would you mark that down and make sure that I have that? So let's hold that question and th that first part anyway. Um, and then I'll show you how the silver fits in. They don't revalue silver. They do just revalue gold, but silver is the secondary currency metal. And so it flows up with gold until typically it hits a certain point. And then because gold is the primary currency metal, gold will continue to express to higher levels until it is probably overshooting its fundamental value but it's true fundamental value is based on the amount of, of paper that they continue to print. So I'll do a whole thing on that actually. Let me dig into it and that way I can do some graphs and you can see it for yourself. Cool. All right, so Norm S. asks is a long question, so. Okay. From your YouTube post on 12-221, that one was called what? Uh, part two, when real estate drops. Part two of when real, real estate drops. I noticed what appeared to be a gap between the start of hyperinflation and the significant rise in the price of one ounce of gold, about five to nine years. What is your advice for holding on to a mortgaged residence if the mortgage is repriced a year or so after the start of hyperinflation? It doesn't appear as though gold and silver will increase quickly enough to allow you to pay off your mortgage before a restructure. <laughs> yeah, actually, when they restructure your mortgage, that's during that whole period of time when everything is getting restructured. So they can't really restructure your mortgage. Well, they, they can do anything they want, I suppose, so I shouldn't say it like that. But mortgages don't typically get restructured until they restructure the currency. So you do have that time. And the reason why you're looking at the official price of gold and you're seeing that lagging even as hyperinflation is beginning to kick in. I'm, I'm not really sure that that's accurate, uh, that hyperinflation kicks in and then you see gold suppressed for another five to nine years. Well, it might I'll have been. I'll go back and look at that It's graph. part two, so because I think you did six countries, right? I did. So it could I have been six countries. one country that he's looking at. Um, maybe. I'll go back and, and look at that because honestly, as the hyperinflation kicks in, everything hyperinflates and um, gold doesn't, I have not, in my mind, I don't see gold lagging five to nine years. How or, long, how long did it happen? If you can remember with do, Venezuela, right? Because Venezuela, well, they artificially suppress the price exactly, of gold for a little while. Exactly. That's where I was going. Well, they'll do it as long as they can. But in the black market, then the price was actually soaring even as it was being suppressed. And it's kind of like holding your hand on the spring. When you remove your hand, then it's going to shoot. In hyperinflation's case, it's going to shoot up. But I do not see... So you're saying in there's, my mind, there's an, a government official price. Correct. And then there's, and then there's, there's a period of time where the, the physical price is... The physical price of gold, not the actual spot market price of gold, right? Which right. is being suppressed. The physical market price is going up. Correct. Right. In in with dealers like us or even private individuals. Well, right. Because the demand. Because of the demand. Well, and also because of the loss of value in the currency as well. So it's a double whammy. But they're but meanwhile they're keeping the the price suppressed here until. Explodes, explodes. Until they're ready to meets, get ready for that reset. Level. Yep, exactly. Okay. Because they don't want you to, uh, what, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So they're going to keep that suppressed as long as they're able to do so. But you see, this is the piece that I, I think is hard for a lot of people to get. And that is, is that at some point, the government needs the price of gold to go to its somewhere near its fundamental value so that they can reset and restructure the currency. So it isn't Wall Street making that determination. Ultimately, it's the central banks and the governments that are going to make that determination. But they are going to definitely keep it suppressed as long as they can so that you don't realize what's happening. I mean, even today, more and more people are waking up as we're watching the inflation, which, which is now lo no longer transitory. Who didn't know that? Uh, but do we still have, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining because there are a lot of people that are noticing this that are taking action. 
But would you say that the majority of the people realize what's really happening with the currency? Because it's not the prices going up, it's the currency going it's down. Definitely, there's definitely more people that are becoming aware than I think ever before. But definitely. would I say the majority? No. No, exactly. And so you have to understand that, too, at some point in here, this is why they don't want inflation to get entrenched. In other words, when they look at inflation expectations, they want you to not expect inflation to be high going out, you know, two years, three years, five years, because then you won't change the theory is anyway, that you won't change your, your buying patterns mm -hmm. and they want to be able to predict it. They want to be able to control that. So, but now they're coming globally. There are a number of central banks, including in the U S that is really kind of seeing that inflation in the public mind is really starting to get entrenched and the rise of unions, which is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Um, you know, I mean, unions are having a day and for many, many years, they've been going downhill. Uh, public private unions have been going downhill. Now that's shifting. There are a number of reasons for that to shift. I want to talk about that more. But part of it is that people see how much money the billionaires have made. They've made a lot of money during COVID mm -hmm. or during this period of time. And then the regular workers, those essential workers. So there's a big shift that's happening right now. And that too will have a function of inflation and whether or not it remains entrenched in a wage price spike, or they call it a wage price spiral. You're making more money, but right. you're also spending more, et cetera. Right. So they pay people more, so they have more money to spend, which then creates further inflation. Right. Yeah. And then, then they're demanding more money. So it, it, we're, we could not be living in more interesting times, I will say that. Okay, so Paul S. asks, with the increase in gold and silver prices we all anticipate, mm -hmm. why wouldn't it make sense to buy mining stocks as well as physical metals themselves? It would seem that just about any mining company would survive or even be bought out by larger mining companies as the middle would be extremely valuable. Well, everybody's got to do what they're comfortable doing. But it's, I don't want anybody to think that a piece of paper or a certificate is the same thing as having physical gold in your hand. So, you know, if you're comfortable in the stock market, then, you know, I'm not going to tell you not to do what you're comfortable doing. I personally, you know, when you're looking at a mining stock, that's not a piece of gold. It has debt attached to it. It has, it has lots of things that are attached to it, but it's not the same as having a physical piece of metal. And this is a currency life cycle. And when you go to liquidate that stock, what are you going to convert it into? You're going to convert it into fiat, into the dollars or wherever you are in the world, into the local fiat. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So... You know, I'm not saying it won't go up and, and you can certainly do that. You just want to make sure that your bet is hedged and it's that is not really your gold position. That's more of, in my opinion, that's more of a stock position. And you'd have to do all your research on the company and look at the debt and look at the management and look at the cash flow and look at all of these things. So it's very different than owning up an ounce of gold. We've talked about this before on the channel too, and I mm -hmm. would encourage you go do go do a Google search for uh, what gold prices did between 07 and right. let's say January 07 and um, December of 09, and go do the same thing with mining stocks and look at what happened um, while gold prices were rising during the period, especially from. Um, around, I think, September, October of 08 to March of 09, and look at what mining stocks were doing during, during that same period of time. You would think they would have moved in lockstep, but go yeah. do the research and check it out. Um, additionally, Edgar, uh, you know that one graph that we have for that period of time between spot gold, the mining stocks, and the collectible coins? So we'll post that. It'll be on our blog and you can go and take a look at that as well. And I'll show you. And the link to but, the blog will be in the description below. Yep. Yep. But yeah, it's a different beast. All right. So Bob asks, I have been hearing lately about 
savings bonds that provide income tied to the inflation rate. Oh, inflation index savings bonds, okay. While I know precious metals are the way to go, as a part of diversifying my portfolio, it seems having money in these savings bonds will maintain the value no matter how high inflation rates go. Aren't, <laughs> well, isn't infl inflation typically runs higher than the CPI, and I think those are tied to the CPI, so, so technically correct. you're not so keeping you, up with real inflation. Correct, and not only that, but what is a bond? A bond is a debt issue, right? And... What's the big problem? Well, we have way too much debt. So, um, yeah, I would not be doing any. I, I don't own any bonds. And as an ex stockbroker, <laughs> I have a very and, and that's what I cut my teeth on were actually government bonds because I didn't know how to read the technical language of the market yet. Um, yeah, no, uh, that provide income. What are you going to convert them into? Presuming there's anything there to convert into. You know, you're converting it into dollars that have no value. So, um, yeah, precious metals are definitely the way to go. That is not a diversified portfolio. I mean, you're dipping your toe in the fire. Okay, KJ asks, if the currency resets 1,000 to 1 overnight, mm -hmm. nobody could afford to be consumers, and so most retail businesses will fail all at once. Am I thinking about the reset the right way? Wouldn't that be chaotic and devastating to everyone's quality of life? Well, if you look at a reset, it actually is very chaotic and does destroy the quality of everyone's life. Um, but nobody could afford to be consumers, sure. I mean, if you listen to the series, The Boots on the Ground, to people that have lived through hyperinflation, this is what they're saying. Nobody, can, nobody that lives in that country having... with the currency resetting can afford to live in that country because wages never keep pace with the inflation. And especially when they're resetting it, when they do a reset, a thousand to one, um, you know, most retail businesses, if they manage to keep their doors open, but unfortunately a lot of them are gone before we even get to that point. And those that do survive, it's on a wish and a prayer because they're not really surviving as, you know, as far as, turning inventory and making money. And you're right, nobody can nobody can afford to buy anything at that point. And you just did a boots on the ground, right? With uh, somebody from Bulgaria? Was it Bulgaria? Yes, she was in college. It was Dr. Ed, Elda uh, Pema, and it was fantastic. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Uh, she is actually originally from Albania, and so went through the uh, hyperinflation, or family, she didn't, she wasn't born yet, but her family went through the hyperinflation in Albania, and then she was in college, so she was definitely old enough to be paying attention, studying economics in Bulgaria when they went through their hyperinflationary mm -hmm. event. And, you know, she was fortunate because she was getting dollars but then the problem for her, once she got rid of all of her lower denomination dollars, $1, $5, and all she had left were, it's so interesting to think of a $20 bill as a high denomination bill because you can't even buy one bag of groceries for 20 bucks. But uh, then she had an issue because what was she gonna get? She was gonna get change that had was losing value constantly. So yes, definitely watch the boots on the ground from people that have actually lived through this. It answers that question. It answers it answers a lot of questions. And that we one need was to know. released yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. We just did that yesterday. And then a couple of weeks ago we had our pad on two or three weeks ago. You know, and that was Romania. Um, we've done them in Israel. What were the other ones? Edgar, do you remember? We've, we've done like over the years, but recently we've been doing more and I've got more even scheduled. So, and I don't know, maybe, um, maybe one of them we can do live and open to questions. Maybe that's a good idea. Somebody would be willing to do that. <laughs> Facial expressions, right? <laughs> Well, so, D, D. Stick, <laughs> Stickney asks, please oh ask Lynette the factors to consider when buying a bug out house. Location, oh. location, location. 
and all that that is definitely <coughs> one location location and also uh, can you be off grid right because you, if you have to be sustainable then you really want to be able to be Yep. Can you grow can food? It, can you grow food? Do you have access to water? Mm -hmm. You should be far enough away from major cities, right? Yes. And very important. Very important. So you can't be, it so makes it, it harder to be looted. So it needs to be easier, easily defensible. Yep. Evil, easily. De so if you look at the mantra, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth, preservation, community, and shelter, you want to be also just speaking about community in a place where it's easier to develop, but it's a small community, a smaller community, not inside mm -hmm. of a big city, so that you can come together and you have different skill sets and things that you can share. But yeah, it all goes back to the mantra, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth, preservation, community, and shelter. And when I'm looking at, when I was looking at my bug out, it's what made it so hard because you have to ha be able to have access to water, which is not always easy in Arizona, the state of Arizona. And um, yeah, mine is really remote, mm -hmm. very remote. Uh, let's see, MG asks, if I buy a house with a fixed rate, fixed interest rate, and then hyperinflation follows, does that mean my debt will diminish throughout hyperinflation? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> yes and no. The answer is yes, it does. That's the whole strategy of the government. You just inflate the debt away, woohoo! But you're not the government. So as an individual, then they end up changing the rules so that your mortgage and your debt gets reset. So you don't really, it, unless you have the ability to pay it off like that, which is what the gold is about, then your debt doesn't really get diminished through hyperinflation. You get to carry it through there, as we saw with Mexico's uh, devaluation in the mid-90s and what they did to the mortgages and the other fixed-rate debt. So, yes, it does, but only if you have the means to pay it off, and that's what the gold is about. All right, well, I think that's uh, the time that we have for questions. Okay, well. Submit your questions to questions at itmtrading.com. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And also, if anybody is out there that has lived through a hyperinflationary event and would be willing to come on and share with our community their experience, then, you know, let us know. You can put that in the subject line um, if they yep. submit it to questions at ITM and then we'll get a hold of you. And because it's more important right now than it ever has been before for people to understand what it's like to actually live through this event. I personally don't think that there's any place that you can go to avoid this. So you better be ready for it. And this, I think, helps us really see so that we can get prepared for it. Because I wish I could say something different, but... I don't see any way around it. We're at the end of the currency's life cycle. We're going into a whole new social, economic, and financial system. So, um, again, if you haven't watched the video with Dr. Elda Pema, I mean, how fabulous that she is an economist, was studying economics at the time that she lived through it. So she has a much better perspective on it than many people would have just because of that background. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you definitely want to make sure to watch this. And if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, make sure you leave us a comment and share, share, share. It is critically important that people are aware of what's really happening these days. But for other updates, Follow my official Twitter at ITM Trading underscore Zhang. Not Lynette underscore Zhang. No, no. ITM Trading underscore Zhang. And we are working on getting verified. So if anyone from Twitter is watching, please help me get verified. And how can they do that, Edgar? By uh, subscribing. And there are other ways that they can help following you, getting the follower account up. Oh, get the following. Okay. So just make sure that you follow us because I think I have to hit a certain level before I can make that official. And we clearly need to make that official as quickly as possible. So I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
Uh, and again, tomorrow's video is going to be on the rise of the unions and the rise of the workers. It's really interesting. But if you haven't already established your gold and silver strategy, click that Calendly link below and set a time to meet with one of our consultants. I think you'll find that they're all very, very smart. And, you know, you need to have a plan these days because it is totally time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And the reality is, is any shield is, does a much better job when it's real metal and not paper or promises. And so until we meet tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.